Integral conservation of momentum is the principle that we use when we're dealing with a large volume in space that contains a fair bit of fluid which could have a velocity that varies over the region that we're looking at. So if we want to conserve momentum over this entire volume, we need to do an accounting for what momentum there is in the volume, what momentum's coming into the volume, what momentum's going out of the volume, and what momentum might be being added to the volume by applied forces. So the control volume is at a fixed location in space and that's with respect to whichever frame of reference we choose. So it could be a moving frame of reference, moving at a constant velocity. And so the rate of change, the rate at which the momentum changes in the volume, so rate of change of the momentum in the CV will depend on what goes in, what goes out, and forces applied. So that'll be equal to the rate of momentum flow in minus whatever the rate of momentum flow going out is plus whatever force is applied to the fluid inside the control volume. So something may be applying a force to the fluid. And F equals MA the force applied is the rate at which the momentum increases for the mass that the force is applied to. So rate of change of momentum in the CV, we need to look at the total amount of momentum contained in the control volume. So for a little chunk in that control volume, with volume dV, some small volume, some fractional volume in the control volume, the amount of momentum in that little chunk is dV, that's the volume, times the density. That'll give us the mass of this little chunk of volume times the vector velocity that that volume's moving at. That's the momentum for this little chunk of volume. If we want to know the momentum for the whole control volume, we have to integrate over the entire volume. So that'll be a triple integral over the volume. And we're interested in how quickly is that changing. So the total amount of momentum in the volume will change with time. So that becomes a time derivative, the rate of change with time of the total amount of momentum in the control volume has to be equal to the difference between what's going in and what's coming out. So if we go and look at an individual little element of area on the surface of that control volume, then the amount of stuff going out through that area depends on the velocity component perpendicular to the surface. So area times the velocity perpendicular, the velocity component perpendicular, will give us volume flow. So area times velocity perpendicular to the surface, that'll be V dot product with N the unit normal vector. Now the unit normal vector is by convention always at right angles and pointing out of the control volume. So V dot N is the velocity going out of the control volume. So there's going to be a negative sign if we're looking for the flow inwards, negative for outwards, so positive for inwards, negative for outwards. This will have to be negative V dot N times dA to give us 
positive for flow going inwards through that area. We need to multiply by density to get the mass flow and we'll need to multiply by the velocity it comes in with to get mv, the momentum. So this is the rate at which mass is coming into the volume and this is the velocity it's coming in with so that's the momentum coming into the volume once we account for that negative sign there. And to get that for the entire surface we have to integrate over the surface so it'll be a double integral over the surface area of the control volume <clears throat> And we've got this negative sign to carry around with us. And that takes into account both the flow inwards and the flow outwards. Because when we get to a little area like this where the flow was going in, then V dot N is negative. V dot N is, in the, is, is uh, a negative value. So that we get negative for V dot N. Put the negative sign becomes positive. That's our flow inwards then these will stay the same and balance each other out unless there's a force applied to the fluid. So this is some applied force. Again in vector form. So this says that if there's a positive force applied then either the stuff coming out of the control volume is going faster than the stuff that came into the control volume or the whole control volume is changing the amount of momentum. Now if we wanted to do this just for x momentum we can just do the x component and instead of having vector v we're going to have u. But we're still going to have the v dot n component for the flow across the surface. So for just the x component conserving x momentum we'll have the same expression d by dt integral over the volume of rho times the x component of velocity times dv must be equal to integral over the area so there's stuff coming in and going out all potentially all over the area of this control volume of we'll still have a negative sign from here we'll still have rho v dot n that's the amount of stuff that's going out through the surface and we still have to account for the vector v because it's still creating a mass flow but this time we're only interested in the x momentum that it's carrying with it so we're only using the x component of velocity integrated over the area plus forces in the x direction. So if there's a force applied in the x direction either stuff comes out going faster in the x direction than it went in or the stuff inside the control volume all accelerates and is going faster than it was uh, a little time earlier. Or for steady flow So if nothing is changing with time, then the d by dt component, no change with time, this will all cancel out. And we're left with fx equal to, taking things to the other side, we'll lose the negative sign, integral over the area, rho v dot n, times u dA. Or if we have a simpler flow where we just have a couple of inlets and outlets, so we've got simple inlets and outlets, so we've maybe got some pipes or something like that coming in and going out, then the force applied to the fluid inside the control volume in the x direction 
must be equal to the sum over all of the outlets of the mass flow going out times the u velocity, the x component of velocity that it went out with, minus the sum for all of the inlets of the mass flow and the velocity it came in with. So what this is saying is if we have in a steady flow so that we've got the same stuff in the control volume at the beginning and at the end, if there's a force applied there must be a difference in velocity between what comes out and what came in. We must increase the U component of velocity for the stuff that's coming out compared to the stuff that's going in. On the other hand, the other way to look at it is if the fluid's coming out going faster than it went in, there must have been a force applied to accelerate it. 